Okay, today I am going to talk about phylum Cylindrita. Just let's revise what we did in the last session. Uh, I had taken a phylum under Parazoa, which is a sub kingdom under Kingdom Animalia. Another sub kingdom is Metazoa, which we had divided into diploblastic and triploblastic groups. Under diploblastic there is one single phylum that is phylum Cylenturator. By looking at the uh, name of this taxon you would know that this comes under diploblastic, so only two germ layers would be there, ectoderm and endoderm would be there, mesoderm is missing or mesoderm is absent. So diploblastic symmetry this time would be radial symmetry. Diploblastic obviously is limit, radially symmetrical animals. Now the term cylindrita comes from seal means a cavity as we have already seen seal omen is a body cavity so seal means a cavity and enteron stands for alimentary tract or intestine so in this case there is a cavity which represents the body cavity and which functions as enteron as well it's the same cavity which is also called as gastrovascular cavity gaster stands for stomach and vascular means made up of vessels blood vascular system for example its function is to distribute the nutrients collect the waste materials or connect to different parts of the body through a fluid medium that function in this case will be performed by the very same cavity connection of different parts of the body so it's called as a cylindron or a gastrovascular cavity. Now the two germ layers, ectoderm and endoderm. Ectoderm is also called as epidermis. Epi means periphery, outer covering. Epidermis, so peripheral covering, derma means skin. And the inner layer, endoderm, is also called as gastrodermis because this layer is in contact with the gastrovascular cavity, single central cavity. So two layers, epidermis and gastrodermis, are present and the two layers are separated by a jelly-like Mesoglia, mesoglia, which may be a cellular layer or a non cellular layer. Even though it is cellular layer, these cells are not part of mesoglia. Cells are either part of epidermis or part of gastrodermis, they are extended into mesoglia. So, two layers separated by mesoglia, a jelly like layer. That's a characteristic feature. Now, other characters let's talk about. There are two forms of uh, animals in this case. You can call that as polymorphism. Poly means many, many morphological forms. Now, though I say many, it is only two forms. One form that's called as a polyp. Another form that's called as a medusa. Clear cut differentiation if we have to have. These are cylindrical in shape, stationary, non motile, and reproduced by asexual means, budding, fragmentation, that kind of methods they adopt while reproduction. So, cylindrical, sedentary, asexually reproducing forms near polyps 
while medusa is an umbrella shaped free swimming sexually reproducing organism sexually reproducing cylindric so shape is umbrella like it's a free living animal motile animal you can say non sedentary and reproduces by sexual means so cylindrical sedentary asexual forms are polyps umbrella shaped free swimming sexual reproducing forms are medusa that's a clear cut differentiation now all of them show different types of cells what are these types the prominent one by which the phylum is identified that's called as nidoblast stinging cells see it's a tiny cell which has a spine like extension through which it can inject a minute amount of toxin a poisonous substance a poisonous secretion now toxicity of this is if injected in adequate form is enough for paralyzing a minute prey see these are holozoic forms feed on tiny animals tiny small organisms those organisms because of this stinging cells can be partially paralyzed and then they can be ingested so presence of nidoblast is a characteristic feature hence the phylum is also named as nidaria other types of cells epitheliomuscular or musculoepithelial cells that is uh, they look like epithelial cells for surface covering but have a contractile capacity so epitheliomuscular cells or musculoepithelial cells that's one characteristic feature there are some amoeboid cells amoebocytes as we have already seen some glandular cells secretory in function some are interstitial cells and some are neurons i'll talk about this uh, a bit more now the life processes if we just go through respiration by the general body surface every uh, individual cell can give out and take in the essential gases nutrition with the help of cylindron there's a, a single central opening that leads to the cylindron and because of the single opening to that cavity this is also described as a blind sac body pattern it's a blind sac there's only one opening there's no other outlet to it so it's called as a blind sac that helps in nutrition that helps in um, circulation as well that's why gastrovascular cavity has been discussed uh of the first time you see something which could be identified as nervous system and that nervous system is nothing but a nerve net it's also named as a diffused nervous system scattered neurons are there which are all interconnected to form a net that functions as the nervous system so nerve net or diffuse nervous system is a characteristic feature about locomotion if it's a polyp locomotion is absent medusa would be free swimming reproduction it's if it's a polyp as i said it is by asexual means budding or fragmentation while in medusa it is by sexual means it is the inner layer endoderm which contributes towards formation of gonads the germ cells are released out from the gonads they undergo fertilization and then the uh, development can take place the development may be direct or indirect what's the difference 
if it's a direct development the the new formed organism the younger seed just grows into an adult while if it's an indirect development uh, there's a larval stage which is morphologically distinct from the adult so it is said that the larva metamorphoses into an adult so if metamorphic process is seen if metamorphosis is seen then it's called as an indirect development here in celebrita the development may be direct or indirect depending upon the specific example and in the case of indirect development there is a planula larval stage which develops into an adult okay that's about the uh, phylum in general now let's talk about further classification of the phylum the classes under it here also there are three different classes first one is class hydrozoa hydra means water so these are aquatic animals See the unique feature of hydrozoa is an undivided and aseptic gastrovascular cavity. Undivided means see most of these are polyps, though it's not a generalized feature. But if it's a polyp or even if it's a medusa, the cavity, the gastrovascular cavity, is undivided. Single central aseptic gastrovascular cavity is seen. Uh, Soft-bodied. mostly marine rarely fresh water animals soft bodied because there is no specific uh, skeletal structure so soft bodied animals uh, some of the hydrozoans they exhibit uh, alternation of generations so what does that mean uh, in the developmental process from uh, a zygote to the adult a few stages could be seen where in the animal is medusoid later on it becomes a polyp so that is an alternation of generations and of course there are a few other uh, uh, stages involved in it reproduction is by asexual means or even by sexual means examples would be hydra which is a single cylindrical polypoid form with these tubular tentacles 6 to 10 in number here's the opening of mouth that mouth is elevated on a conical projection that's called as hypostome tentacles will be starting from here this projection is called as hypo stome which is surrounded by the tentacles tubular tentacles now all that together mouth and the tentacles together that's called as an oral disc then this is the rest of the body and here is a basal or a pedal disc basal disc or a pedal disc that's a characteristic feature internally there is a single central undivided cavity extending into these tubular tentacles these tentacles have large number of nidoblast stinging cells these are also identified as batteries of nematoblast or nidoblast that's a characteristic feature reproduction by budding or by sexual means another example could be physelia physelia it's also called as portuguese man of war now why that so this is a gas filled balloon like structure called as a float or a nematophore
which floats on the water surface and different types of organisms stay attacked on this site. Some of these are reproductive in function, they are called as gonozoids. Some of these are nutritive in function, they are called as gastrozoids and some of these are defensive in function, they are called as dactylozoids. So three types of hydrozoids, they stay attached to this single float, single nematophore. See it looks quite like a jellyfish, it looks quite like a medusa, but it is not a medusa, this is a float, a support to which a number of hydrozoans stay attached. So it's a kind of colony, colony of organisms with the different functions assigned to different forms of organisms. That is what Physalia is. And an example of hydrozoa. Next is Siphozoa. The word Sipho stands for a cup. So cup like organisms here. Exclusively medusite. Polyps are usually not seen. Exclusively medusite organisms. So free swimming sexual forms. Again exclusively marine forms not seen in fresh water unlike hydrozoans. They also show presence of uh, cylindron but this time the cylindron is divided into at least four compartments. There are two cross septa, two cross septa. This is one septum, this is another septum. So four compartments are formed. So at least four compartments are formed in Cyphozoa, that is uh, uh, jellyfish is there. These are majorly uh, medusoid as I have already said and marine animals. If medusoid, the reproduction has to be by sexual means. So sexually reproducing organisms. Example could be a typical jellyfish that is Aurelia. This is what it is. Here there are tiny tentacles. Four arms are seen, oral arms they are called. And here the sex organs are seen, gonads are seen. That is what jellyfish should be looking like. Next we talk about anthozoa, also called as actinozoa. The word anthos stands for flower. See these are, unlike the earlier two phyla, these are exclusively polyps, polypoid forms. Medusa would not be seen here. And here the cylindrical body, this is fixed to the substratum and here there is a ring of large number of tubular tentacles. Which gives it a flower like appearance, hence the name Anthozoa. Right in the center would be the opening of mouth. The tentacles have a uh, nidoblast. Base is fixed to the suitable substratum. This is rest of the body. Internally, it's divided into a number of compartments by complete or incomplete septa. The septa may not be running all through the length of the body. They could be partial or incomplete or complete septa which divides the cavity internally into a large number of chambers or compartments. That's a characteristic feature. Now here that planular alva which I mentioned about it is seen in here. Example is 
adamsia that's commonly called as c animal this is what it looks like adamsia or c animal I'm sure you must be enjoying these videos, so keep watching them so as to update your knowledge about animal classification. Don't forget to put a like, subscribe to the channel and share amongst your friends and family.